Earth. You got a copy? I don't know if you've had your coffee and correct grammar this morning, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. Today is going to be a little mini class on parse. Probably one of the most important things one can learn or perform with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now, <clears throat> there are a couple things I would like to say before I begin. And this also stems from a couple comments I received on one of my most recent videos. And you can check that out if you want to. I published those comments. Where an individual asked me something like, is it worth my while? Or, or will studying your Parse playlist help me create my dictionary? And then this individual went on to say that they fully understood quantum grammar. Do you see the dichotomy in what's being conveyed here? If you fully understood quantum grammar, you would know the answer to your question, number one. And number two, if you actually looked at the Parse playlist, you would certainly have your answer. Parse is the backbone of a dictionary. <laughs> Any dictionary, whether it's quantum grammar or whether it's fiction, babble, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. It is the backbone of it. I can't count the times. I'm talking thousands of times. I've been in workshops with students and I'll say, is this word tangible or non-tangible contract? And they'll give me an answer and I'll say, why do you say that? And they say, well, I think it means, and I'll say, hold, hold on. Have you parsed the word? Have you actually looked it up? And they'll be like, well, no. See, it is most important that you look it up for yourself and find that original nativity root meaning of those particles. That's why it's called parse. That's the only way you can be a steward of your grammar. How can you give closure to your contract terms if the other contract party confronts you and says, what does this word mean? And then you say, well, I think it means, I feel like it means, no, 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 no. You have to know what it means and you have to give a continuance to the evidence as to how you know that. You have to give sources. You have to give closure. You have to give a source to where someone can go to it and look at it and be like, oh, oh, okay, that makes sense. Then they know. And then you're in contract joinder with the cognition and closure. Parse, very important. Oh, another thing I want to uh, mention is one individual said in the last Coffee and Correct Grammar uh, mini class that I did, they said that I seemed very angry and that they hoped that I get over whatever it is that's angering me. I was not angry at all. I very rarely get angry. I think that's an impression that people get when someone is being blunt. And the more someone brings the facts to the forefront, the more some people aren't used to that and they think that it, it denotes like anger or something. Kind of like the way, you know, I have some uh, friends from Kazakhstan who, when I first met them, I would hear them talking and they were talking very loud and it sounded like they were about ready to get into a fist fight. And then I just realized that's the way they're talking because they're very straightforward. It's kind of like that. So no, I, I don't take anything personally and I very rarely get angry. So no need to worry on that count. Also. One other thing before I get into the mini class, there are on occasion individuals that email me and will basically demand services from me. One guy demanded that I send him a live life claim template. Another guy asked, but asked in a sort of a, in a position that he was not in to be able to ask this question, wanted me to send him a dictionary and wanted me to send him paper and templates. I have never claimed to be anything other than a grammar tutor. If you contract with me for a confidential workshop, you are getting a workshop with a set curriculum. When you go to school or to college, you don't walk in and 
and say, well, this is what we're going to learn today. And you tell the teacher what they're going to be doing. That doesn't work that way. You're going to get kicked out. Same thing here. If you're contracting with me for a service, you've requested to board my vessel. I give you permission to board my vessel. You must follow my terms and conditions or you're going to be jettisoned. It doesn't matter to me um, if you found it within your heart to send a donation and a gift or not. If you're rude, you're out of here. And also, you would be well advised to read every contract, especially mine, to know what I mean by gift donation. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got some comments here. Do I need the Red Fox stamp for a live life claim? That has nothing to do with the grammar. We're talking about grammar here today, specifically par se. Um, if you read the description of the video, you will see that. This is not a live life claim, nor a postal workshop or mini class. This is a grammar mini class, specifically to do with par se. And so what I'm going to begin with, what is par se? Does anybody know what par se is? Basically means it's the parts particles of words. That can mean letters, words, syllables, these types of things that you could get closure on. Uh, because you apologized, which really not necessary, uh, but Bill, I will say that no, it is not necessary. What that red fox stamp does is add weight to the document but it is not necessary to have a live life claim with a red fox stamp on it. As long as it's a stamp with a whole number denomination, whether it's $1, $2, $3, whatever it is, cannot be a fractional denomination, must be whole number denomination. And that's all I'll say about that. So the word I'm going to parse uh, has, and I'm going to take you through the steps of how I do this. And by the way, Everything that I'm going to do here today is already available on my Parse playlist in multiple uh, videos. So it's already been available for those of you who want to learn this stuff. Ab or original, no original, not original. Well, original itself is no contract. So it's no, no, ridge contract. <laughs> But that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about the word, a word that I see a lot of people using who claim to have some sort of closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, including some people who claim lofty titles in the domain. They use the word comprehend. I'm going to write that in the comments. So they, they use the word comprehend. Why would someone who claims to have closure on the grammar use that word unless they don't have closure on the grammar? Unless they haven't parsed the word. Because I'm just looking at it right now. I see C-O-M-P-R-E-H-E-N-D. What is that P-R-E in the middle there? What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. And you can look this up. You can follow along if you go to etymologyonline.com. Hopefully, you will be able to see my phone. I'm going to put it up here. Comprehend. The first particle is C-O-M. So let's look that up. It means with, together. Okay? Okay. What is the next particle? See, I'm still on the same page. Comprehend. Scrolling up. The next particle is P-R-E. What does P-R-E mean? It means before. Okay? It means before. P-R-E means before. Now, P-R-E means no, literally. Why does P-R-E mean no? I'll take a minute or two and wait for someone to answer me. Why does P-R-E mean no? 
while we're we're uh, waiting for that, I'm going to go to the rest of the word, which is hend. Eric the Viking, I appreciate your uh, your compliment there. Although I don't know if that's true or not. Val and two consonants, no contract. Bill, what does that have to do with comprehend? Michael Ninja, or prior to. Why does PRE mean no? Okay. So here, we're, we're, I'm going to come back to that. So now you see the next particle, if you look here. Looks like it says uh, hender from the Proto-Indo-European root gend, which means to seize or take. So let's look up gend. Yeah, it means to seize or take. So why does PRE means no? You ready for this? When I do workshops, I'll usually, you know, when I use this example to, to do parse and, and show how you find a particle of negation, I will use the prefix RE. And I'll ask people why RE means no. And without fail, they cannot answer me as to why it means no. It's the same thing with PRE. It's the same reason why it means no in the context of quantum grammar. And the reason why PRE means no and why RE means no is because they negate the now space. Anything that negates the now space, putting something before or after, in the future or in the past means no, no contract, particle of negation. Just like the suffix ed is past tense, it's no contract. PRE means before, it's not right now, it's before. We're violating rule one rule equal, we're violating the now space by putting it somewhere else other than the now space. So that's why PRE means no. So if we look at the entire word together, uh, the particles comprehend, we have com, which means together, P-R-E, which means no, and then hend, which means to seize and take. So what does comprehend mean? It means together with the no seizing and taking. <laughs> so it means the direct opposite of what you may think it means because of that particle of negation. Because when you put that zero in that multiplication problem, it zeroes the whole thing out. It's a particle of negation. In this context, this concept of grammar is only for English, or you can translate to another language the rules of the rules in all the world. The rules are the rules for correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And yes, theoretically, you can apply this technology to any grammar in the same way we, we apply it to plain English. Now, I don't know anyone. And I've spoken with thousands of people all over the earth. I don't know anyone who is conversant with quantum grammar in any other language other than English. Theoretically, how it would work is that you would perhaps have to find an English, a, a tutor of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, who speaks English, and then you speak English, and then you learn it and get closure on it in English, and then you take it and translate it into your tongue that you want to translate it to. So learn it in English and then translate it to over to Spanish or German or whatever it is, Chinese. That's up to you, though. That's nothing that I have a volition of doing at all, because that, that would take an enormous amount of uh, now space and effort, which, um, frankly, I have other practical matters that concern me that I have to take care of from on the day to day. So it's not something I would do unless someone wanted to come in with the, a donation that would be able to keep a roof over my head and keep food on my table. And then of course I'd be happy to help out. Rule one, rule equal. So that's basically 
how to parse any word. Look it up in an etymology dictionary. Now, you don't have to only look it up in an etymology online. There are many other dictionaries you can use. It doesn't matter what dictionary it is, as long as you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. And a lot of times that's going to be the pi root, the Proto-Indo-European root. And as I said in the community post uh, when I was um, sort of advertising this mini class, people asked me, you know, how if, if everyone creates their own dictionary, then everybody's going to have different meanings for the words. Now, theoretically, that could be true. But that is the reason I created the parse playlist and I created a consistent method of how to parse words. If you were to follow that method and go to the earliest nativity root meanings of the particles, while the exact wording may be different than someone else, your meanings would be very similar. And of course, if you're going to contract with someone else, you must both agree on the terms and conditions. So you would have to adjust your dictionaries accordingly if you want to contract with one another. And I also get emails from people asking me, hey, would you want to sell your dictionary? Would, could you please share your dictionary? How about no? <laughs> the reason being, and this comes down to the psychology of the grammar. If, I'm not, I was going to drag out my big dictionary. If you use someone else's dictionary, what have you done? You have given the author of that dictionary jurisdiction over your grammar. When you create your own dictionary, now you take jurisdiction over your own grammar. Now you're the author and authority of your grammar. Do you understand? You have the closure, not Webster's, not Jason or someone else's dictionary. It's your dictionary, your contract closure. And if someone doesn't want to contract with you, so what? That's great. The less contracting, the better, the less headaches, right? More contracts, more problems. <laughs> Is there a specific etymology dictionary you would recommend? Uh, hippie with a gun. If you've been listening to this mini class, you will know that I suggested etymologyonline.com. It's the most common one. It's easily available. If you look up, I mean, you can just use Google. Just type in a word on Google and say, um, comprehend etymology, and it will give you the etymology of comprehend. And it will also give you a link to etymology online and other etymology dictionaries. You can go into Latin dictionaries. You can go into Sanskrit dictionaries. You can go into Greek dictionaries. Whatever. It's up to you to do the work. I've already done the work. I'm highly recommending to you, the viewer, and whoever's listening and getting value from this, to do your own research. Use what's available. The internet, Google is a huge tool. I mean, as limiting or as watchful as it is, it's still a great learning tool. And it doesn't take much to download a, a Tor browser and look use DuckDuckGo or something if you don't want to use Google. The information's all out there. Nothing hidden. People like to say all the time, oh, this is stuff's being suppressed. It's being hidden. No, it's not. You just have to know how to look for it. And you have to want to be motivated to take the time and energy to look it up. I find that that's the issue. People don't want to do the work. They want it handed to them and spoon fed to them. And that's not something I'm going to do to anybody. Because I come from the school of teaching where if the student does the work, the knowledge is going to stick better than if it's just handed to them. That's rule one, rule equal. What word would you use instead of comprehend? Well, one that comes to mind is cognize. It's one I do use. RE means no because it negates the now space. <laughs> yes. All right, so that's your mini parse class. My gift to you.
hippie with a gun. If you look at the email address at the, pinned at the top of this comments field, if you're interested in fast tracking your learning, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I can look each other in the eye, use our correct names, because you know my correct name, but I don't know your correct name. You know what I look like, and I don't know what you look like. So we have to level that geometric level playing field with a video consult. And then we can find out, you know, is this what something you want to do? And I will help you. And uh, you can apply for a workshop. If not, the sum total of my correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge is available on this YouTube channel, the very one that you're on right now. You're on board my vessel. Over 300 videos. Everything that I teach, all the knowledge in the workshops is available for free on this YouTube channel. What people come to me for in the workshops is the one-on-one -on -one interaction where if they ask me a question, I can give them a closure like that, kind of like I'm doing right now. I do this every day. And the more I do it, the better I get at it. And I also will say this to you students and learners out there, one of the fastest ways to learn is to teach other people. If you know what you're talking about and you're passionate about it, other people will pick up on that and you will learn a lot faster by repeating it and teaching it to someone else who's open and interested into it. Now, if they're not open and interested in it, what's the point? At that point, if you're going to try and force someone to learn it, then you're no better than the fiction because that's what the fiction likes to do. The fiction likes to try and force us to do things which they have no authority to do because where does authority come from? It comes from knowledge. If you know what it is you're talking about, the fiction will part like the Red Sea. Trust me. What's the beef between... I'm sorry, I don't participate with the soap operas, so you'd have to ask them. I don't have beef with anyone, so... I don't really care. <laughs> this is a drama-free zone. Sorry, it looks like I posted the wrong link. What link would that be, truth seeker? Could you speak on that addiction to the fiction? What addiction is that? I don't think there's an addiction to fiction. Fiction's fiction. I mean... There's no escaping it. It's here. It's what we were born and raised on. It's not going to go away anytime soon. I find that the best an individual can do is to learn this stuff for themselves. And that way they could be a steward of their contracts rather than being controlled by them. That's the best way I can put it to someone who doesn't know the grammar or who is a beginner. You can become a steward of your contracts rather than being controlled by your contracts. Because control is no contract. How do I know that? Contra is a particle of negation. And yes, the word contract has contra in it. That is why I hyphenate the word. I'll show you in the comments. I write the word contract like that. So that it means together along the same tract. <clears throat> rather than contra, no contract. And this all comes down to parse, what I just showed you earlier in this, in this mini class. I've just given you the keys, basically, to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which is made up of three elements. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, and syntax. And it's all grammar. Grammar comes at the end because grammar is the authority of it. So, um, what, what was the last thing I was going to say? There are some that, that feel like this stuff shouldn't be public. That it shouldn't be freely given away like this. My question is why? Why would someone want to hide this? Why would someone want to bottleneck it? Final suggestion. Highly recommend everybody look 
and do their own research, look up the words, parse the words, use etymology dictionaries, whatever dictionaries at your fingertips. <clears throat> Google is a great tool. Use it. Put the work in. Put the hours in. I think you'll be happy you did. There are no shortcuts in this grammar. If you take a shortcut, that means that you're probably using an appeal to authority. Why does RE means no? Well, because David said so. That's not going to work for you when you're talking to a judge or a Vasily. David said so isn't going to get you very far. Trust me on that. Can you just stick a hyphen between fragments of any word any time? Can I? Um, there's a method, <clears throat> pardon me, there is a method to me doing that. Hyphens show a compound fact. And if you study the grammar, you will find this out. Compound facts are created with hyphens. You're taking two, two or more sevens and putting them together with a hyphen, making one seven. You would have to give a finite mean for each fact separated by the hyphen. And then also you would have to give a finite mean for the entire word joined by the hyphen. Again, you just got to take the time to study the YouTube channel. I've literally invested thousands of hours to put these videos out for you. And it's contingent upon you to take the time to study the channel. Or if you want to fast track your learning, email me and we can set up workshops if that's something you're interested in. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. I'm going to take this back, edit it, and put it out in a little smoother form, get rid of the superfluous uh, chit-chat, and it'll be another mini class. So far, I've done mini classes on syntax. I've done mini classes on correct sentence structure. And now this is the Parse mini class. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.